Hey, I just got this question from David on LinkedIn. He said, hello, uh, my name's David. I've been following your series and I wanted to ask what types of projects I should be working on to build up a solid portfolio. That's a great question, David. I get that question a lot. And so I thought I might as well make a video explaining it. So the question is, hey man, I know I'm supposed to get good, but how do I do that? How do I structure my getting good? Um, we're gonna answer that. So the first thing that you need to do in order to get a job in the games industry is you need to get an interview, right? And that is hard, but it's easier than passing the interview, I would think, right? Eh, maybe not actually. I mean, there's so many, <laughs> there's so many applications these days. Maybe you really are lucky if someone just returns your email. So I guess that's the other side of things. But we'll cover both in parts. We'll talk about how to get the interview. And then I have a whole book I wrote on how to pass the interview. So that'll be its own thing. So the first is, how do you get the interview? What you need to do is you need to build an awesome portfolio. So a video game portfolio, uh, let me see if I could pull one, one up. Hold on. Hey, I just found this, uh, this book that I wrote called Hacking Internships. And it's currently has this link, which is tinyurl.com slash hackinggamesv2. And so I highly recommend you read this book. This is like the book on how to get a how to get an interview, basically. And I have a bunch of links to different portfolios I like there. This is a portfolio from a filmmaker. I really like his portfolio. I think it's very like sexy. It's it's very fancy, um, where he kind of goes through these different videos that he's made, and like it's amazing. Like the the portfolio itself is an art piece. Now, I mean, this guy is clearly pretty far in his career, and that's not like anything you have to do. It doesn't need to be that special. Here's a portfolio from somebody who has had a very um, awesome career, and it's like it's really simple. It's just a blog spot, basically. But when you dive into the content, you're like, oh, wow, this is really impressive. So what he does here is he'll just be like, hey, I worked on this thing in Red Dead Redemption 2. He explains it in a paragraph. And then he links with a time code, so it jumps immediately to the part that's relevant to a YouTube video of somebody playing it. And if you worked on a release game, this is one of the best things. Like, be like, I made this awesome boss battle. Here's what it looked like. And then you just jump to some streamer being like, holy shit, this is amazing. Like, those, those are some of the best portfolios to look at, right? Because it's like, oh, wow, you've got sort of, um, you've got like the public kind of on your side showing how it's like amazing. So the feature he was talking about how, is how when he picks him up, he has a dynamic animation to grab at wherever the guy's pockets are so that it looks like you're actually looting his pockets. And so this guy made that system. So he's just showing that off right here. And he built a whole bunch of other systems. And like he kind of just goes through, hey, I built this. Here's a video. I built this. Here's a video. Built this. There's the video. Um, I think that's really effective. Uh, and I, I love this guy's portfolio. So uh, I think he did a really, really good job. And basically, this is just a write-up. So he just goes through a whole bunch of Red Dead Redemption 2 stuff he did, which, I mean, I don't know. That... So he said it's six and a half years. So this is six and a half years of work. So obviously, it's not like a student's work. But I feel that uh, this is a really good thing to shoot for. Uh, then I also like Noel's, Noel Berry's uh, portfolio. He basically just has a bunch of different games he worked on. And... If you click into it, it will, it, this is kind of just short version. It just says, you know, this is what I worked on. And then you can visit the website. But usually you want to go into a little bit of detail on what aspect of it you worked on or have a YouTube video that kind of hits the high level notes. Uh, this is not the time to kind of show people code or anything like that, really. It's just like high level view. Did you do something interesting? Did you do a somewhat important role on that topic? Uh, you can also check out my portfolio where, um, Basically, I just I just have here on my home screen, I have like a video that plays of like two different games that I worked on and it'll kind of switch between different games. So obviously I was inspired by that Japanese guy. And then if you scroll down, it'll just be like, okay, here's a game I made. Um, and these are some of the things I did. And here's a game I made and some of the things I did. And then I link off to references for like different news articles where people wrote about stuff that happens in the game. And then in the case of the games that I made myself, I just link to the example. Uh, now, uh, that, that's kind of less of a factor, I think, in the jobs I'm applying to these days, but basically I would just kind of do, I, I, this thing, side quest, kind of has a write-up of like all the different side quests I do, and it would just explain like, okay, this is what I did, and then I explained what my roles were and what I worked on. And, you know, some other portfolios would go into more detail, but ideally you just have projects you did, 
what did you do? And then hopefully a video that kind of explains it or just demos it in some manner. So that's essentially what a portfolio needs to be. So the next question is what kind of projects do you do in your portfolio? So it's like, okay, I've set up a website. Now, what kind of project should I do for it? And the answer to that is you really want to look up, um, you really want to look up what, um, like what the, what this game studio is known for that you want to apply to. So for example, uh, this is the example I usually use. There's this guy named Kratos. He's apparently the God of war and he, in the God of war 2016, I think it was game. They have it so that when you throw the ax, it comes back. And this is like a very cool mechanic and it's, it's a very player facing mechanic. So, what students do is they will demo that if they're trying to apply for Sony Santa Monica. So you do like Kratos, God of War in Unreal Engine. Just type in something like that and then you'll get a video like this. I mean, I to download it. There's a ton of videos like this. Okay, so it's not like there's just one guy. I mean, there's a lot. Okay, so I don't know why he's showing me a computer right now, but basically he makes Kratos in Unreal or Blender or whatever. And then he... I don't know what he's doing. Oh, he makes a zombie, I guess. And then I guess there was a gun. And then he adds the axe. And then hopefully he's going to do the axe throw. Are we going to see it? All right, maybe not. Did he not do it? Oh, maybe he doesn't actually do the axe throw. That's kind of what I wanted to see. Where basically you kind of pick one feature and you just add that feature. So God of War, Unreal, Engine, Axe, Throw. Um. Yeah, so like a whole bunch of people have done this. Here, we'll just click on the first one. So here you go. So he throws it, and then he pushes a button, and he recalls it back. So that's like a simple example. You take a game, and you implement one simple marquee feature, and you explain how you did it in the context of a video, and boom, that's a project. These projects, we're looking at a length of about maybe a week. Don't spend longer than that on like a portfolio project. I mean, it's impressive if you made a game like over a month or two with your friends, but it's more impressive if you made like, you know, maybe like six projects and like three of them were really good. Like that, that's probably better. And I mean, if you're applying at Sony Santa Monica, they're, they're just going to skip to the God of War one anyway, because like that's the one that's for them. You know what I mean? So that that's kind of what they would prefer, I think versus like a really big project. I mean, um, of course it's, you know, you want to have big product experience too, so you could speak to that. But in terms of just like getting seen, I think something simple like this is good. Now here's a problem. <laughs> this guy implemented this in uh, blueprints. So this would kind of be like a little bit weird to apply as a gameplay engineer and you're doing your solution fully in blueprints because coders don't use blueprints. Blueprints is primarily for designers. Uh, maybe a coder every now and then will work in a blueprint, but the fact that he did all this in blueprints would be kind of like a red flag. They'd be like, okay, that's kind of weird. Like, do you know how to code? Uh, and then if so, why didn't you do it in code? So try to do it all in code if you can, because a lot of people are kind of like disrespectful also if you just use blueprints. Like I remember when I worked at uh, actually Fortnite, like the, the coders at Fortnite were pretty disrespectful. Like if you did blueprints they were kind of like oh you're not a real programmer so i would kind of watch out about that uh definitely um do it in code if you want to be a coder if you want to be a designer who designs blueprints then do it in blueprints of course right but but try to do a feature in the game of the company you're working for and using the skill set that you are expecting to do on the job so that's kind of the main idea so you basically build out a bunch of those demo projects and then that's gonna give you a good portfolio to apply to jobs. Ideally, you do a project that's related to the thing. So for example, if you wanted to apply it like Civilization, the Sid Meier company, whatever that's called, I forget the name, um, then you would do like a cool feature in Civilization, like, I don't know, maybe expanding territory or the hexagonal uh, battle system. You know, you just, you just kind of pick a game and then you implement one cool feature. Like if you were trying to apply at Nintendo with the Mario, maybe you do a little demo Mario game or something like that. You know, just, just something simple, quick. Again, you're only spending maybe a week on this. If you're spending longer, it, it's too long. The, the important thing is that you finish and you get it up on the portfolio because 
I'm assuming if you're asking, that's because you're trying to apply to a job. So it's like w one week or so for a project is good. And I mean, this guy, you know, I mean, how long do you think this guy took to make this? Maybe like, I'm going to guess maybe like five hours or 10 hours. Like we're not talking about a, a one month project here. This is a very simple little feature and yet it, it looks great. And I think it demos pretty well. So that's kind of what you're looking for. The other thing I would recommend is don't be afraid to use assets that you're not being quizzed on. So for example, if you are making a game that uses Kratos, like why not download a really HD 3D model of Kratos and a 3D environment that you might see in a God of War game and then just just cite your sources, right? Say, hey, I didn't make the models, but I did all of the coding. That way it looks really amazing and that will just kind of elevate your your like delivery. They'll just be like, oh, wow, it's so beautiful. But like, even if the beauty isn't what they're evaluating you on, that will affect their score. So just consider that. It's kind of important. It's like, you know, like on a fancy chef show, you know, you're not going to serve your, you know, your dish, their filet mignon, a filet mignon in a, like a little, you know, shitty cardboard to go box, right? You're going to put on like a nice fancy plate, drizzle all that syrup and shit. Right, so that's something to consider. Like the presentation does matter, even though uh, you're not being strictly evaluated on it. It's like it, it actually, it, it does make a difference. Uh, so that's what you do. So that is basically how you set up a portfolio. If you wanna hear more about how to get a job, I would recommend this site, tinyurl.com slash hackinggamesv2. This is a book I wrote. It's pretty long. And I'll probably convert this into my paid book at some point. But once you are getting the interviews, I have a book that is freemium. It's called Get Into Game Dev. And you could just Google that, Get Into Game Dev. And it will explain how to pass the interview. So once you're consistently kind of getting the interviews, then this is a book that would help you. There are some free chapters on this, which could be useful to figure out whether or not, you know, for example, there's a free practice test so you can figure out whether or not you already know that stuff. But, um, but this is probably a little bit ahead. So this is the book that you would use kind of once you feel confident in the portfolio and now you're focused on passing the interviews. And at some point, I'm probably going to grow this book to include all of the sort of like pre-interview steps as well. I just haven't gotten around to it yet. So for now, that's all free content. Um, okay, so hopefully that answers your question. Uh, good luck, Mr. David and anyone else who comes across this video.